so so let's talk about it you put your notice in uh he, he tries to rescind it talks you into staying for another tv you feel like at that point when you when you're officially out um he pulls you back in and, and, and promises to fix it at the next TV. So we've had three meetings now, and now maybe because there's been, uh, some underground railroad action going amongst the boys and everybody's, uh, doing the whisper campaign. He feels like he needs to set an example. Maybe that example becomes you guys and you're on your way out. When does the whole, Hey, we need you guys to take a drug test thing become an issue, at least on the Tully side of the equation? Well, those happen periodically all the time. You know, drug tests could be anytime, just random. Um, first thing that happened, they wanted to get the belts off of us. So we dropped them back to demolition. So made sure those were done very businesslike, um, which I enjoyed working with those guys. No problem there. A lot of respect for both of them. Um, we got that done and we got a few weeks into this thing and, um, here was the one that really let you know they can do what they want to do. The actual drug test that Tully, they claim failed was like two drug tests ago. It wasn't the last one that he had taken. Does that make sense? Right. So they went back and said, okay, well, if he had failed that one, why did they continue to let him work up until the point that he took this other supposed drug test that he failed? You know, that, that was a little honky there, wonky, whatever you want to call it. A little strange. So they said, okay, they were just going to, I think he had like, hmm, of the three months, about half that time was left. Still, so they sent Tully home. They put Haku in his place, and we continued to work the bookings, which was with demolition mostly, but some other got you know a few guys scattered here and there for those last few weeks. So Tully just went home early and said, "Okay, I'm fine with that." It's fascinating to me the way this this all sort of comes together and comes to a head at the same time. I know we're getting way in the weeds, but obviously the drug testing, you know, situation has changed, not just in WWE, but in all sports and, and, and not even sports, just employment. Uh, the methods are, are way different now. What was drug testing like back in 1989 in the WWF? Uh, what do you mean? Just as far as the mechanics of it? I mean, like, you know, you don't. It is, it is quote unquote random. Nobody gets a heads up. You show up to TV or sometimes maybe it's not a TV and a random guy in a lab coat approaches you and says, Hey, need you to go fill this up a little plastic cup. And then he follows you in the bathroom. Is it that simple? Yeah. You walk in, it was usually on live events and it was usually the, you know, like, uh, it was the first day back from being off because they knew some guys would go home and party. Um, then they got sneaky and it was like the first day back, you know, or the last day, you know, like the last day of a loop. They would just, you'd walk in and there'd be a list on the wall and in the production office or wherever it was, like at a live event, there'd be a list of names and there would be guys, like you said, in the, in the coats standing there with a plastic cup, they would follow you in the bathroom and have to watch you pee. And there's no way to cheat it that I saw. I didn't, I mean, I didn't have that many up there. Um, no reason for it. Obviously <laughs> I definitely was not on the gas. You can just look at me and tell, That's funny. but, uh, but you know, no reason to, you know, to be testing me very often, but anyway, um, that was big news as you could imagine. <laughs>